all messed up here. Let's start recording. And um, uh, ah, live transcript. Okay. Ah, uh, enable auto. Okay. And now I suppose I can turn it off for me. Hide the subtitle for me because it's annoying. Uh, so, hey, what I found out is the previous version of the stew data file was corrupted by three invisible characters at the very beginning of the uh, file. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, if you pass your CSV data uh, through Excel and you save it from Excel, Excel is going to uh, write three invisible characters. Uh, it's beyond the scope of the course to discuss uh, why they're invisible, but uh, they're invisible and you, it's hard to get rid of them because they're invisible. So um, uh, there is a way of dealing with them uh, more naturally through the CSV handling package in Python. Uh, there's a means of specifying the Excel dialect when you uh, create the reader, uh, but we're not going over that now. I just wanted to uh, make sure that you got an updated um, stew data CSV file. Uh, my tip off was that the major, uh, this, the file that I was getting my majors from is the only one that was uh, passed through Excel. And uh, there was an error on the first, only the majors that showed up on the first line of the file. That was my tip off to go looking for something extraordinary. Uh, all right, so uh, as we always do, let's begin. Oh, I started up uh, quick time, but I didn't actually set up a screen capture. And... I'm almost there. Yay, okay, now I can share that. So here's what we're gonna do today. Now we're uh, unfortunately uh, one class out of sync with the afternoon class uh, due to uh, uh, the our last class period being uh, an assessment only for the morning. You know, if they're gonna, Cancel classes for the morning. They should cancel classes for the afternoon too. That's my feeling. So how about review? We review anything and especially chapter seven and chapter eight of the book. Folks? Questions? Can you explain what the argv is? I'm a little confused on if that's like a list or a function or something. Uh, well, it is a list. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, I'll just show the console from Replit. And uh, that's actually not gonna do much good. So let me uh, get a, a little program. What can I use? Oh, good, this one happens to be empty. So in order to use uh, argv, uh, you have to import this. So argv comes to you via the sys package. And uh, what argv allows you get it to get access to is the uh, items that you use on the command line when you launch the program. So uh, we would launch the program using Python and you give it a name of a file to run, in this case strings.py, and then there may be other options out here, uh, for example, a file name. Okay, so let me leave that there for a minute and let's look at sys.argv. So print, 
sys.argv, and uh, let's look at the length as the first thing. And then uh, for uh, S in sys.argv, so it is a list, like you said, Sydney, it is a list. And let's print um, S. Okay. So there's my program. I'm going to run exactly this, this same command uh, string again. And you'll see that the length of the list in sys.argv uh, has always at least one value. And that is the name of the program that you're launching. So I am executing strings.py. So strings.py shows up in the zero position. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's do, um, let's change this to an enumerate. And we'll see both the index and the string together. Let's run that again. So the zero position is the name of the program that you ran. And then one after the other, any other arguments that you provided to the command line. Now, what's great about this is uh, you no longer would, for example, have to uh, hard code the name of the file you want to process. So uh, if you want to process this month's data versus last month's data, or perhaps open uh, Japanese words versus biology words, you can keep the exact same uh, program code and change what file is being used just by altering the arguments. So for example, um, uh, April data .csv. And that would cause my program to read from that file if it existed. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Thank you. Good. You're welcome. Next question, please. Is that what argv does? Is tells it to run differently depending on the arguments that you put in the command? Well, argv is simply a list of strings. The list of strings is constructed for you when your program starts running. And it is constructed from whatever uh, appeared on the command line. So uh, strings.py is going to be the name of the program that I'm running in this case. And it will show up the name of the program you're running always shows up as the first item in the list of sys.argv, it's a list of strings. And then here are more strings. So the strings are broken apart uh, wherever there are spaces. And if you want to include a, uh, as a single string, something that has a space, then put it in double quotes on the command line. And then you see uh, index number three in what was printed out uh, has two words in it separated by a space because on the command line, they were surrounded by double quotes. Okay. okay. Thank you. More questions. Why does it put the four above zero, one, two, three? Uh, that is this line right here. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So most of the time you're going to be launching Python programs from a command prompt. Uh, in the case of Replit, it's in the shell. But if you have Python installed on your own computers, then you'd either, if you're on a Mac, you'll launch it from the terminal, or if you're on Windows, you'll launch it from the command line. And uh, it's extraordinarily powerful and flexible to be able to uh, interpret the arguments that you give it from the command line. Catherine, how are you doing? I'm good. 
Good. Good. This uh, it's. I, I might have commented before, but you have some lovely pictures behind you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, anybody else? We can talk about chapters seven and eight or any other chapter in books. I have a question on chapter eight. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, do you mind if I share my screen? Uh, sure. Uh, do you want to use mine or would you like to share yours? Um, I have just a quick question. Like I almost have it. I'm just struggling getting this last piece off of my answer. Okay, uh, so go ahead. You're enabled to share your screen. Oh, I have to stop mine. Yeah, okay. So I just can't get this last line off because I thought if you, like right here is where I'm getting long. I don't know. I've tried to change the thing, but I thought that adding this um, negative one here would indicate that if it's the last one in the row, then it would print this one instead of printing this additional line. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. That's good thinking. Let me uh, finish pouring this. And all right. Testing with input one, two, three. Uh, well, I guess uh, the first thing I would wonder about is, um, let's see, they gave you line eight or did you create line eight? Oh, uh, they gave you line eight. Okay. All uh, I created so were the four statements. So for each row in multi table, uh, could you help me out by printing the row with a temporary statement uh, before line 11? Yeah, so just print row. Let's see what row looks like. Because if row isn't what you think, then uh, okay, so row is a list and it's one, two, three. Okay, you can take that statement out now. So for the cell in the row, uh, whoops, things are happening on my screen. Hmm. Well, that's uh, strange because it looks to me like you've, you're doing it right. Oh, 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 okay, I see. Um, I, I think that you're creating a slice which is going from the beginning to one before the last item. I'll bet if you remove the colon on line 12, that one, yeah, go ahead and try it now. And okay, so, so now you're getting it right. You just have the one uh, issue. Yeah, good, good. And yeah, just end with uh, nothing there. Yep. Okay. Try that again. There we go. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it was hard for me to see because all your characters are little teeny tiny characters. Okay. How about another question? Uh, I have a question on 8.3.1, one of the challenge activities. All right. Uh, 8.3. And that would be 
8.3.1 get user guesses. Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. So write a loop to populate. Uh, let me make it bigger for you because uh, it could be tiny characters for you too. Uh, write a loop to populate the list user guesses with a number of guesses. The variable num guesses is the number of guesses. How many times can they repeat that? It's like I saw this episode of Below Decks and, and every other word was uh, mahi mahi. And they kept saying mahi mahi, mahi mahi, oh, so many times. I turned off the TV and left. Uh, the variable num guesses is the number of guesses, mahi mahi, the user will have, which is read first as an integer mahi mahi. Uh, read the integers one at a time using mahi mahi int input. Okay. Um, so if the sample input, sample output with input, um, Okay, so what they're hoping that you do is to uh, create the list, okay? And so they start out with li on line two, declaring the empty list, and they'd like you to, num guesses has already been read. So I think that what they're looking for is a loop uh, for, um, counter in the range of num guesses. So you have a loop that executes num guesses times and read the integers one at a time using int input. Okay, so uh, we could do this in one line. Um, but do you remember uh, what we wanna do is append the most recent input to the end of the list. Do you remember how to do that? Um, it wouldn't be user guesses dot append, would it? I feel like yes, I'm it would. Okay. okay, and then here comes the input. So int input, and yeah, okay. Let's try that. Okay. Thank you. I just had some of the first part wrong. The second part I had. Okay, line five you had, but line four uh, stumbled. Yeah. Okay. Oh, happy to have helped. Okay, other questions from the book? So remember folks, mm -hmm. I still have not taken the grades yet from chapters seven, eight, and actually I haven't taken the, the grade yet from chapter six. So if you want to go back and uh, keep working on your, your readings, you can increase your grade. Just saying, not that grades are important. Wait, just a reminder, uh, do we not have to do 8.8, .8, any part of it? And 8.8 .8 is that evil list comprehension thing. And uh, there it is. Yeah, don't don't do any of that because uh, uh, you, you know you won't be able to look people in the eye after that. You know, no eye contact, and and you'll go around taking pictures of shoes. If you, uh, I accidentally did a little like uh, a part of a challenge. How do you feel? Do you feel okay? Any headaches? I mean. Like my head's in the wrong place because I'm not used to not seeing this thing as a hundred percent, but uh, I'm all right. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I, I will be able to exclude 8.8 .8 from the grade taking. And uh, therefore, uh, even though it doesn't look that way for you, but you're still a hundred percent in my books. All right. Okay. Other questions? Where did pictures of shoes come from? That seems pretty specific. Uh, well, uh, I know some, uh, some young photographers 
um, and uh, they just walking they just walk around with their their phone like like this, taking pictures of their own feet. And I don't get it, and it really ah. annoys me. So I brought up uh, part of my lived experience here, um, okay. and uh, I don't get it. Fair enough. Yeah, and it it would be a falsehood if I said I'm not passing judgment because I definitely am. Fair enough. Okay. I have unfriended people on Facebook when they take pictures of their own feet in lying on the beach. That really disgusts me. So just don't do it. I have a question on a previous chapter. Oh, but nothing having to do with feet on a beach. Maybe. 16.17.1 uh, for the challenge activity. Or six, sorry. Six. six. Okay, I was wondering about that. Okay, six point what? Uh, it's the last one, 17.1. It's the challenge activity. Okay, define a function, compute gas volume that returns the volume of a gas, mahi mahi, given parameters, pressure, temperature, and moles. Use the gas equation. Uh, uh, okay, so there's the equation, uh, nRT, so uh, where P is pressure in pascals, V is the volume in cubic meters, N is the number of moles, uh, and R is the gas constant. T is temperature in Kelvin. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, what is it that they want us to compute? Define, oh, define the function. Okay, so the, the goal is to define the function that returns, so let's see. So here's the part that we know so far. Uh, so what's given for us is, oh, let me make this bigger so you can read it better. That is the name of the function they want us to declare. And from here, we can also gather the parameter list. Uh, so I'll just copy that and paste it here. Need the colon at the end. All right, now let's uh, factor in our uh, formula there. I'll bring that down as a comment. Um, okay. So... What they want us to compute is the volume, which means we have to divide both sides of the formula. You didn't know this was an algebra class. So we have to divide both sides. Okay, the parentheses here are not strictly necessary, but in order to isolate volume by itself, we needed to do a little algebra on the formula. Okay. All right. So uh, V is what we're going to return. So um, return, and what is N? N is the number of moles. So that would be uh, gas moles. This is the hardest part is just getting their their, uh, uh, the mapping of the parameter names. And let's see, N. Okay, now what's R? R is the gas constant. Okay. And what's T? T is the temperature and that we get from here. And then a division takes place, and that would be what? From gas pressure, I think. All right, let's try it. Hey, I got lucky. Beginner's luck. So Kevin, there was lots of opportunity to get uh, sidetracked here. 
uh, was it the algebra or mapping the parameters to the right places? It was mapping the parameters. It was just kind of confusing to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, they had me going, so understandable. Do you have any questions about the solution? No, it makes sense. Okay. Other questions? By the way, it is nice to see so many people here today. Um, so uh, I heard that uh, students of, at colleges across the, the country are going to appropriate their own spring break, uh, just leave class, just not attend class for a week and, and go do all these dangerous things. So what's the word on the streets? Is, is you hear that's what's gonna happen? I did not. Are you making a comment about me not being in my dorm room? What? I'm noticeably not in my dorm room. Is that what you're referring to? Oh, no. Over breakfast today, my wife was telling me about uh, an article she read where uh, um, many colleges have canceled spring break uh, or shortened it. And uh, the article she, said, she read said that students are going to take it into their own hands and uh, simply not attend class for a week so huh. that they can have their traditional spring break. Well, I'm definitely attending class, but yeah, the reason I'm at home is because there is no spring break and we already had dentist appointments and optometrist appointments made, so. Oh, okay. Well, it had nothing to do with you, Milo. I'm, I'm pleased, okay. uh, please accept my apology if you felt it was singling you out. That was not my intention. Nah, it's all good, it's all good. Okay. Okay, anybody uh, have questions from the book? No? Okay. Well, uh, I have a couple of things I would like to do today. Uh, also, make sure that you got the new STU data file. So I, have that I, that's yeah, go ahead. I have a question that's exactly not related to the book, but it's been something I've been wondering about for a while. Mm -hmm. What's your word per, words per minute typing speed? I have no idea. Never checked. It's fast. Uh, well, I've been doing it a while. And also what you're seeing is uh, two finger typing, not touch. So never learn touch. Um, yeah, we should have a type off. Now the trick is, can you do it type quickly and accurately? That, that's of course the, uh, the trick. Okay, so I'd like to show you a new way to read CSV files. Uh, we might wanna do a review. Anybody feel like a review on reading CSV files? Okay. Uh, well, let's see, here is, Stu data. And with Stu data open, let's. Um... Wrong, wrong window. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So with Stu data open, uh, I'm going to add column headings. Okay. Very, very often the first line of a CSV file does not contain data, rather it contains the names of each column. So for example, I might have uh, ID comma, uh, L name comma, F name, uh, uh, gender and uh, email address, uh, cohort, um, credits, uh, GPA, and major. Do you see how that first line 
has the same number of columns and is giving a name or a meaning to each of the columns. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this idea of the of the first line containing the column headings? Okay, so that's saved. And uh, let's go. Uh, all right, so we're reviewing CSV. So uh, we'll write some code and then we'll come back and review it uh, and improve it and also switch the way it's reading the CSV. But let's just do a general review right now. I have to import something. What do I have to import? CSV. Yes, that's right. Import CSV. And also I'm gonna use the command line, give us some practice there. And that would be an import we saw before of sys. Okay, now we wanna write a really nice looking uh, Python program here. So we'll do it uh, using the method uh, that we talked about. Uh, let's see, and that's just a placeholder pass. And this is the, the right way, quote, right way to, to launch a, uh, the coding of a uh, Python program. So if dunder name dunder is equal to uh, dunder main, and uh, let's run the, we'll call the main function. So let me, uh, I gotta do this again. The reader.py. Okay, no, no errors so far. That's good. I'm impressed. Uh, so we want to get the name of a file from the command line. So let's make sure we have a command line uh, argument. So that would be using sys.argv and it would be using length. So can someone tell me a if statement that I can write to make sure I have the right number of arguments? So we know that the length of sys.argv is always gonna be at least one, but we wanna check to make sure it's at least two. So we wanna make sure there's an argument there. So here we go. Uh, if the length of sys.argv is less than two, give an error message that is describing what the problem is. So the user isn't left wondering. Please supply a file name. Okay. I'll put the pass over here. Let's try that. We write a little, test a little. Uh, let me mute. Let me You did not need to hear me uh, sneeze into your ear. All right, so please supply a file name. Now, if I give it something, let's, uh, let's give it what we're going to give it in a minute. Uh, good, so I didn't, I no longer get the error message because it executed this pass. All right, let's try, oh, that was a bad pun. Let's try opening the file with uh, open and uh, sys.argv1 as f. And let's do a pass there. And now we're gonna need to have an accept 
Uh, what kind of exception? If I recall correctly, does anybody recall what kind of exception it's going to be looking for? Is it file not found error? Exactly. File not found error. Uh, let's give them a, a, a good, meaningful error message. And you know what? Let's learn something new here. So on this line, you can extend it a little bit uh, by saying as some variable. And um, uh, that will put information about the exception in the variable called uh, that I named EX. But I can't quite remember right now. Hmm. I can't quite remember now what the uh, the the how to get the information out. So let's just try uh, let's just try putting ex right there and see what happens. So I've got to write this again. Yeah. And I'm giving it a bad file name. Oh wow! Look at that. That's pretty cool. Why don't I just print EX? That seems to be a really good error message. No such file or directory. Hey, that's pretty good. Now the user knows exactly what's going on. All right, well, let's test to make sure if I give it a good file name that I don't get the error message. Good. Okay, jump in with questions, right? This is review. Yeah, my accept isn't happening good. I'm getting a syntax error right at the beginning of accept. Make sure it's tabbed with try, because I had the same thing. Ah. Thank you, Kevin. Yep, now it worked. Thank you. So where you have with open, um, you used the sys.rv and then the index for your file, and that's how you can switch between different files without changing your code? Yes. Okay. Exactly right. Perfect. All right, so let's add a little detail. This is the way that I have shown you already to process a CSV file. So we'll say um, uh, that a uh, uh, reader, and we're gonna use csv.reader. Now, I hope I'm not confusing you by using the word reader twice. For emphasis, I'll just call that R, okay? It's that they're, they're not related to each other. And I'm gonna wrap the open file in a CSV reader. And for a row in R, print the row. That'll get us started. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, th this, this file is 3,000 lines long. I don't want to print them all. What if I wanted to uh, exit this loop the first time it runs? So I'm, I'm just doing a test. There is a statement I could put next that will uh, break out of the loop as soon as it's executed. What's that? Wouldn't it just be break? There you go. Okay, so this is just test code. Let's try, oh, okay. So it got to line 11 and it had a row from the first line from the uh, CSV file it printed it, then did a break of the for loop, which uh, allows it to end the program. Okay. So that is our review. Does anybody have questions? There's also something we can do with like head and tail, right? 
Something about uh, oh, head, yeah, yeah. and then it's just like the first couple lines, and then tail is yeah. just like the last couple lines. Right, but that's, that's something that's with not, that, right? Yeah, there's not actually, but that's not actually in Python. That it, is in your shell, and you can say, let's say, head of stew data, and it gives you the first few lines, or you could say tail of stew data, and stew data could be any text file. And that gives you the last few lines. What do you mean it's not in Python? Uh, well, uh, head and tail are not Python programs. There are other programs that are available to you via the command line. Because we're in Replit? Yes, because we're in Replit. Now, okay. head and tail are standard Linux, Unix, uh, or Mac terminal commands. So they exist on any Linux machine, any Unix machine, any Mac in the terminal, uh, but it unfortunately does not exist. Uh, you can make it, you can add it, but does not exist in Windows by default. All right, now take a look here. And that is our first line of the file. I added that, if you recall, just a few minutes ago. I added uh, this line. Hello? Uh, this line I added to the data. So it's the very first line, and it seems to have an identification for each of the columns. So right now, if I wanted to get at GPA, I would have to count to get the right index for the GPA column. And it would be uh, index uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ah, 7. So if I want to get the GPA out of a line, I have to know somehow by counting, for example, that index seven of each row is going to be the GPA. Okay, that's kind of impractical. It could get hard. What if somebody changes the order by inserting a new field? Then seven might not be seven anymore. So I'd like to show you a different way of opening the file and using a CSV file. Yep. So come here on line, my line 10, and instead of reader, it's going to be capital D I C T capital R reader. So that's the only change I've made. That is the only change I've made. Okay, you ready? This, the output's gonna be very different. And here we go. Oh, that is interesting. Now, the last time I ran this, I got the first line was the name of the, uh, of, of the columns. And I printed out the first line, that's, that's what I got. I got the first line, which is the names of the columns. Here, uh, something is very, very different. This does not look like a list, does it? What does it look like? Dictionary. Dictionary. And what are the keys? The column headings. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So now, if I want to get the GPA of a row, uh, this, this doesn't make any sense, but it's what I'm showing right now. So it would be row GPA. Now I don't have to remember, oh, it's column seven. Oh, somebody changed the file. Now I don't know what it is anymore. As long as the column heading is in the right place, you don't have to know what index number it is anymore. You can just use the column heading. Okay. 
just so, to be uh, sure we've asked it to give us a random one right because i did not get mcdonald somebody sarah mcdonald i got somebody else but uh are you using the latest file that i asked you to download yes oh okay well it should be uh sarah mcdonald just... oh i also got a different one mine too yours everybody's got a different one it sounds like you're I still got... using the old file i got lindsey parks um i'll i'll bet now i've deleted the old file right um i also deleted the old file is there a chance bad stew data was the one you wanted us to download uh bad stew data is the old one hey let's take a look <clears throat> and see what the um, initial value there is so this is the old file and let me download that. And let's take a look at the first name. Uh, did you get Hannah Price? Nope. I have what Lindsay. Did you get? Yeah, I've also got Lindsay Parks. Okay, maybe there's even a third version of the file floating around there somewhere. Who knows? Oh, no. Well, okay, so this is uh, bad. How okay. exciting. Let's get rid of that. Well, let's continue on. And uh, if only I could find what I was doing. Uh, let's continue on, and if you run into any difficulty, we'll change. We'll 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 address it then. All okay. right. I have to. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to reload my screen here. And Replit doesn't want to talk to me. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Anybody know that line? Okay, that's from a film called Cool Hand Luke. It's a very good movie. Okay. So using Dict Reader, uh, it will eat the first line and use that first line as the keys for a dictionary. And thereafter, instead of row in R returning a list, it'll return a dictionary. So for example, I could say, uh, show me the major and then show me the GPA. And now I don't have to know what the columns are uh, indexed. Okay, so I have uh, eliminated that break. So now it will print the entire file. Let's try that. Uh, and okay, so there is an entire file full of majors and GPAs, please run this because if you have a if you have bad data, this may show it. Everything work fine. Okay. I only got one row. Okay. Did you? Oh, did, I never took breakout. Never. There you go. Okay, stopping here for any questions. Anybody? Okay, now I'd like to do another uh, parameter on the command line. So I wanna pull a report 
that uh, lists only people from a specific major. So for example, um, criminal justice, that's how I'm gonna use it. And I haven't changed the program yet, but uh, I want to identify only the students of the major that I type in. Yes, Milo? I have- Is the sun in your eyes? No, I have taken a look. Um, what class was it that we wrote the program to fix the stew data? Uh, was that the that, afternoon class that I dropped? That was the, an afternoon class, yeah. I've checked the stew data that you had us download at the beginning of class, and I checked the new stew.csv that we created in the other class. The new stew.csv has Sarah McDonald as the first uh, student in it. But the one that you had us download just now has Lindsay Parks as the first one. Really? Yes. Let's see, what about this one? Um, okay, I have downloaded that. Uh, we've got 12 downloads. And let me, uh, let me download it again and see what we got here. Although this doesn't really impact the class, so. Um, I, just, I, I was being. Oh, there's, yeah, there's Lindsay Parks. Okay, so it's, it's my mistake on my end. Uh, will you forgive me? Yeah. Okay. So don't expect my names to be the same as yours. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I'm getting a key error for major. Okay, good. That's what I was uh, uh, trying to avoid. Uh, by, by any chance, uh, well, tell me what it says. Uh, it says file main.py line 12 and main print. Uh, it just says key error and then in parentheses major. Yep, that's the bad data version. Okay, uh, did you download the new file? Yeah, I, I only have the one that you sent out today. Do you mind going to the stu data real quick? Because I might have it entered wrong. Here? Yeah, I have uh, it all. Oh, wait, should I not have spaces? Yeah, don't have spaces. Okay. All right. All right, that worked. Okay. So going here, uh, well, what do you think we should do? You're the designer of this system. Uh, if we, should we make the major required or optional? Meaning if you don't specify the major, you get everybody. But if you do specify the major, you only get the people in that major. What do you think we should do? It's your choice. Required. Required? Okay. Now, if it's required, what should we do here? You ask it for an argument. Change two to three. Okay, yep, we could change two to three. That's one way of doing it. Uh, but then if it's not, if, if, if it's not three, uh, we'd, our error message would have to say, well, we don't know which one that you didn't give, right? So maybe we'll keep it like this, but add, L if the length of sys.rv is less than three, then we know which uh, value the user didn't give us so we can give a better error message. So how about uh, please um, 
supply a major code. And that way we can give a better you uh, the user a better error message. What do you think? Is that a good idea? So let's try it again. And um, whoops, it's supposed to be arg v, not arg c. All right, so I'm going to give it no arguments. Please supply a file name. And uh, now I'll give it a file name, but no major. Please supply a major code. Okay, now I'll give it both. Criminal justice and my program runs. Does anybody uh, get frustrated by uh, programs that feed you error messages just one at a time? Like just happened to me. I ran this and I got one error message. So I fixed that. And then I got another error message. Does anybody bothered by that? All right, if you're not bothered, then I'm not bothered. Is okay. there a way to have it so that the first time that you get an error message, it tells you exactly what you need to put in? Well, yeah, yeah. I raise it, I raise all this just to point out different options and choices you might make as the uh, programmer of this system. So the, the way that I went about it is to break them apart, the errors apart, so that you, I give precise error messages, but that also means I'm gonna dole them out one at a time. Okay. So now I'm looking for people that are only within a specific major. So how can I change uh, the line that I'm on right now to weed out people who are not in the same in the right major? Now we're in a loop. It's dot rv uh, two equals the major. Okay, yep, yep, you could do it that way. I was going the opposite direction, but that way works too. The direction I was going was if it's not the right major, I'll do a continue. So the way I was gonna do it was this, uh, if row major is not equal to sys.argv2, Continue. That's 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 how I was going about it. Hmm. I I don't really like this. So why don't we say uh, desired major equals this dot rv two, and I'll make this desired major. Okay. Now, the other way that was suggested uh, was going to check for equality, in which case we'd indent that line. So you could test for inequality, handle it one way, or you could test for equality and uh, handle it a different way. Let's see what we get. Write a little, test a little. That's my mantra. Write a little, test a little, and give it uh, criminal justice. Wow, look at that. I've only got lines that contain criminal justice. Good. What if? What do you say if we wanted to uh, uh, determine the average of all of the people in a particular major? 
uh, but only if they're juniors. Well, heck, let's add another, uh, yeah, only if, and we can also specify what cohort they're in. Now I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> too much, too many arguments. So uh, anyway, how would we figure out uh, the average GPA of everyone in the uh, desired major? Um, we okay. sum and then divide it by the length of how many in desired major. Okay. Uh, so I, I see where you're going. Let's say a counter because I don't know in advance. I'm not going to store everybody. Uh, so um, I'll keep a counter of how many criminal justice majors we found or the desired major. So counter is plus equals one. And the sum is plus equals uh, row dash GPA. Ah, you think this is work going to work? So let's print it out. Print the um, average GPA in the desired major is going to be, and what's it going to be? It's just going to be sum divided by counter, correct? Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is not going to work. Let's try it. Whoops. Well, for one thing, I got to get the syntax right. I needed a comma. Boom. That's what I was expecting. Oh, do you have to make it an integer? Uh, close. You're on the right track, but we need to make it a float. Okay. And where would I make the change? On what line number, please? Could you change it on 14? Will you initialize the sum? Oh, uh, that's initializing the sum and zero works for float or int. All right. So then 19? Yeah, right. So float. Because right now it's a string. You got to turn it into a float. Wow, that's pretty exact. <laughs> so maybe we want to um, format that to give us fewer decimal places. What do you say? Anybody remember how to do that? Okay, so how about here? And I want to put in uh, point, let's say two places, float dot format. Okay, so I formatted just the floating, the floating number. Let's try that. Okay. By the way, I designed the data so that the average grade was a B. And what is the GPA? Uh, 2.97, which is close to three. Let's try a different major. How about uh, all those computer science people? They're so smart. Uh, oh, well, criminal justice does better. How about um, uh, M-U-T-T, -T, which 
uh, I think was what musical theater or something like that or something. I don't remember. So what's your major? Anybody? First one. Math. Okay. M T H. Ah, they're doing best of all. You see what we've got here? We've got a way of uh, making a general purpose tool by varying the command line arguments. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Now I want to introduce something new. For the very first time, you're going to write to a file. Okay, now for now, I'm gonna tell you how to do that, but I'm not gonna tell you how to do it safely. So you gotta be really careful here. And what I mean is if you uh, open a file for writing, it's going to destroy the previous contents. So if it's a file, if you give a file name for writing that you wanted to keep, this is going to destroy it until we learn how to keep the old contents, okay? All right. So uh, what I want to do is uh, duplicate the input that, let me make this bigger. matches the major into a new file specified on the command line, okay? So for the very first time, I'm gonna be showing you how to write to a file. Okay. So let's make that a required argument. So elif length of sys.argv is less than four. Print. Uh, please supply an output file name. And um, so this is still argv2. We'll keep the arguments in the same order. Output file sys.argv3. And so you ready? Here, here comes opening a file for writing. Be very careful. Uh, we could nest this inside there. Okay, so we'll just do it by nesting. With open output file, here's the way that you open a file for writing. You have a second parameter whose value is lowercase w. Uh, 
Okay, but now I've got to increase the indentation, of course. And folks, I'm gonna uh, change the, the, the program. So I'm gonna delete this line. It doesn't do that anymore. Okay. Are you with me? Let me know when you're with me. Okay. So let's wrap CSV dot writer. And we're wrapping out file with a CSV writer. All right, so I wrote a little, let's test a little. So right now it's not gonna do anything. Uh, let me just check to make sure, this should give me an error message. Please supply an output file name, good. Uh, I'm gonna do an LS and notice there's uh, no file called, um, Oh, I do have one called output.csv. So, whoops, I lost, I lost it. Okay, I'm gonna remove it. So, um, rm output.csv. So now I do not have a file. I do not have a file called output.csv. So I'm gonna create one by saying output.csv. Nothing's gonna go in it, but it should be there. And there it is. So just do that on your end and make sure that a file was created. So give it a, a file name for output that doesn't exist. But I'm not calculating GPA anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I still want to limit it only if it's the desired major. I'm not doing GPA anymore, so I'll get rid of that. Now, how do we write? If it's the right major, I wanna just duplicate the entire row. CSV dot write. And I'm going to give it a dictionary, but that's not quite right. I don't want it to write the keys. I want to do just the values. Uh, and it's not CSV dot write, it's W dot write. Okay, so let me leave that there for a minute. And then we'll try this out. Can we see what a line, can we see the numbers of the lines on the side? Yeah. Please? Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try running this now. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want it over here. Oops. Uh, okay. Let's see, what did I get wrong? Uh, line 28. Nope, how about line 23? Hmm, no object right, or is it right row? Oh, okay, it was right row, not right. 
Okay, here comes the big test. Let's see what we got in the output CSV. Cat output dot CSV. Woo! I, I like what I see, but I see one thing wrong. Does anybody know what it is? So one thing wrong with the output. What's missing? Column names. Good. So we got the data by saying row.values, and row is a dictionary. So we know that for dictionaries, you can get the keys by saying row.keys. But we only want to do it once. So we need to write uh, code away that we only output once. And it has to, the output has to come after line 19. I'm sorry, after line 20. Okay, so, but we wanna make sure that it only happens once. So it says if, we want to set up set up a variable to let's say let's say the variable's name is needs uh, uh, heading needs headings and we set that to true but then after we print out the headings we set it to false and therefore we'll never do it again here watch how about so needs headings equals true If needs headings, then w dot write row and give it the row dot keys. And then to make sure we never do this again, set needs headings to false because I've already done the headings. You see the beauty, beauty of this logic? We set up a flag that says, I need headings. And once I've done the headings, I set the flag to false so that the if statement won't run it again. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, wrong window. Okay. And thank you, Replit. I have to type it in again. I wish it would give you some warning. Now I'm frozen completely. This works. I don't want to ask Siri anything. Uh, folks, I got to reload my page because nothing in this window is working. I'm hitting return now. Nothing's happening. So I got to reload. Do that again. And I've lost my code, so I've got to fix that. Uh, so... Okay, so needs headings equals true. And now once I'm in the loop, you put it after W before or after yeah, W equals CSV writer. Oh, that, yeah, that one, it doesn't really matter where we put it. Okay. 
as long as we get the indentation correct. So, okay, so here, if needs headings is true, then uh, w dot write row, and we're gonna write out the row keys. And then make sure we don't do it again. Okay, so Python B reader, and we want to give it stu data, and let's do um, religion, and uh, the output file would be output.csv. Great, no errors. Let's take a look at output.csv. There you go. So I have successfully, you have too, successfully filtered the omnibus file, which has every major, and you've written a tool that will extract only the majors that you want, the major that you want. Does anybody have any questions? So in the few minutes that are left, let us write comments on this code so that we can remember it and what, we're, what everything does. So check to ensure command line arguments are proper. And that's what all of this is about. Okay. Uh, open a file uh, for writing. This is dangerous. We should learn how to make it less dangerous. Uh, wrap the output file in a CSV writer. Uh, ensure headings are printed only once. Uh, open the input file for reading. wrap the input file with a dict reader. All right, and then the main loop is for every row in the input, uh, if the row has the right major, write it out to the output file. First, having checked to see if we need to print the headings. Okay. So uh, I think this is a well, reasonably well-documented program now. And what I'm gonna do is download it and I'll email it to the class. Uh, download, uh, shucks, that's, uh, 
I'm going to download everything. Can I? I don't know what I just touched. Okay, can I download just this file? Hey, if I put the following in the chat, or just somebody tell me if you're able to capture it, if you see it. All right, so here's, what do you get when you do that? Can you try and download that? I have no idea what you're going to get. So when you click on that, what, what happens to you? Pretty much just gives us all the files you have. Uh, really? For me, I it took me I to guess. a place with a big green button and I pressed the big green button and it brought me to basically oh. the console and it said, hey, supply a file name. It, it took me to that too, but on top it says, there are two things that say output and code. I clicked on code and it pretty much just gave me all the files that you see on the left. Cool. Oh, okay. Ah. On uh, his page, not the, the web page. Yeah. I mean, you could just screenshot the code and then send us a screenshot. Yes, that, that's true. But uh, as a screenshot, it'll be a picture. And that means you can't just paste it into your own code. Uh, but I'll, I have other ways of, of doing this. So let me copy. And I'm doing something in a different window. Okay, and now I will. Okay, I've captured it. Now let me uh, email it to the class. With that link that you sent, when I hit code, I could see the code for all of the files on your replit. It kind of like okay. shows your whole account. Oh, I don't mind. Uh, so let me go to uh, and send a message to everyone. So today's code, and um, there's a way to attach a file, isn't there? That's a link I want to attach. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, I'll be with you in just a second. Okay, so check your email and you should have the file in an email attached. So give me a thumbs up. Good. Okay, so looking at that or your own copy, do you have any questions? I have a quick question. What um, what was the use of the Dunder name Dunder that last like thirty six and thirty seven? I forgot what the what we used that for. Okay, the uh, uh, what this is doing here is if this Python file is the file that appears on the command line, which I have to do again. Stupid. Uh, Python um, D reader. So if I'm specifying D reader.py, so this will be true only in the code file dreader.py. Okay. So the reason why you do your Python programs in this way is because 
a Python program can be loaded from or imported from another Python program. I'll give you an example. Uh, I will do it as an example right now. Uh, let me add a file called um, foo.py. Oh, I already have one, don't I? Uh, bar.py. And I'm going to from D, what was I, what did I call it? D reader import main. And um, I'm going to print um, underscore underscore name. And that's not really going to help, but let's say, let's run it. Python uh, bar.py. Okay. Now I'm going to call main. Now notice main's code is not here. Where is it? It's in dreader.py. Okay, so uh, this code, let's go back to dreader.py and over here say else print, this was imported into another file program. All right, let's try bar.py. See, look at that. It was imported into another program. Now, I can still use this directly, but I can also use it from another program. So in this case, Kevin, in this case, we executed that line. But in this case, we executed this line. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we're out of time, unless you've got a, a, a quick question. All right, uh, I'll see you on Tuesday and I'll be whipping up some uh, new projects for you so we can get back to uh, coding on your own. Okay, everybody. Yep. See you on Thursday, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.